I'm glad India did not land in the same place everybody else has landed on the moon. That's not interesting. You chose a place where no one has landed before, and that's the south polar region of the moon. Delving into the enigmatic realm of the moon, India's Chandran 3 mission has stumbled upon a noteworthy revelation, sending ripples through the realm of celestial exploration. Recent remarks from the esteemed Neil deGrasse Tyson indicate that India may have unearthed something of significance, previously unbeknownst to NASA. This disclosure has ignited spirited discussions amongst the scientific community, raising the prospect of unveiling fresh lunar mysteries. Yet, the question lingers. What exactly did India encounter on the moon that NASA might have held in secrecy? Join us on this journey as we unravel how India has brought to light what NASA might have concealed on the lunar surface and contemplate the potential implications of this discovery for the future of space exploration. Let us transport ourselves back to the year 1966, an era of groundbreaking space endeavors when Luna 9, a mission crafted by the Soviet Union, accomplished the historic feat of gently landing on the moon's surface. Luna 9, with its modest 199 kilogram mass and a diameter of merely 58 centimeters, stood as no ordinary spacecraft. Its ingenious spherical capsule design served both a functional and strategic purpose. Adorned with four pedals that played a dual role during the landing, Luna 9 performed a vital role in stabilizing the craft while unveiling essential instruments. Among its state-of-the-art components were a communication radio system, cutting-edge solid-state radiation detectors, and a pivotal thermal control system. A remarkable enhancement to Luna 9 was the addition of a television camera perched on a rotating platform. This innovation allowed for the capture of captivating lunar vistas. The transmitted images were truly awe-inspiring, showcasing the lunar landscape with its striking contrasts of rugged craters and rolling hills, unveiling unexplored territories untouched by human presence. The impact of Luna 9's imagery left a profound mark, captivating audiences across the globe and making headlines in well-known media outlets, such as the Daily Express newspaper. These images, received by the Jodel Bank Observatory in England, sparked a wave of fascination and inquisitiveness about the mysterious realms beyond our Earth. As we delve into India's Chandran 3 mission, stay tuned to uncover the hidden lunar secrets and consider how this newfound knowledge might influence the future of space exploration. In Luna 9's meticulous lunar exploration, a wealth of data emerged ranging from the bone-chilling temperatures of minus 153 degrees Celsius during the lunar night to scorching highs of 123 degrees C during the day. These temperature readings shed light on the moon's near absence of an atmosphere, revealing an environment significantly different from Earth. The pressure measurements provided a stark contrast, registering at less than a billionth of our planet's atmospheric pressure. Furthermore, Luna 9 diligently provided information about radiation levels, revealing a daily dosage of around 30 Rankin. These findings offered vital insights into the lunar environment, which are crucial for comprehending the challenges and possibilities for future exploration and potential habitation. Going beyond mere observation, Luna 9 actively engaged with the lunar soil by carrying out a basic yet groundbreaking experiment in soil mechanics. Employing a rod to apply pressure on the moon's regolith, the spacecraft made a significant discovery, a minimum bearing strength of at least 0.4 kilograms per square centimeter. This significant finding hinted at the durability of the lunar surface, suggesting its potential to support future landers and rovers, marking a pivotal milestone for upcoming missions. Nevertheless, as is often the case with space missions, Luna 9 had a limited operational lifespan, coming to an end as its batteries ran out after approximately three days on the lunar surface. Nonetheless, within this brief time frame, the spacecraft managed to transmit a total of eight captivating images along with invaluable scientific data. From Luna 9 to Apollo 11, the history of lunar exploration has been marked by pioneering missions that have played a significant role in shaping our understanding of the moon. Luna 9's groundbreaking mission in 1966 marked a turning point, opening doors for further exploration. 
Following in its footsteps, Luna 13 embarked on its lunar journey on December 24th of the same year, contributing significantly to our growing knowledge of the Moon. This subsequent mission shared Luna 9's goals, conducting similar experiments that delved deeper into our understanding of the Moon's nature and characteristics. The efforts of Luna 13 in 1966 solidified the foundation for future lunar explorations. However, the apex of human space exploration arrived with the monumental Apollo 11 mission in 1969, reshaping our understanding of the cosmos forever. The historic journey began on July 16th from Florida's Kennedy Space Center, representing the culmination of the ambitious Apollo program's objectives. The primary objective of the mission was to safely transport human beings to the lunar surface and ensure their return to Earth, a task entrusted to three exceptional astronauts. Neil Armstrong, the mission's commander, made history by becoming the first person to set foot on the moon. His historic steps were followed by Edwin Buzz Aldrin, the lunar module pilot, while Michael Collins orbited the moon in the command module, providing support as his fellow astronauts explored the lunar landscape. The Apollo 11 mission represented a marvel of engineering and innovation, consisting of three essential components. The command module, aptly named Columbia, served as a safe haven for the astronauts, guaranteeing their return to Earth amidst the vastness of space. Accompanying the Apollo 11 mission was the service module, a vital element that supplied life-sustaining resources like power, oxygen, water, and propulsion to the command module, also known as Columbia. This ensured the astronauts' survival throughout the mission. At the core of the mission was the lunar module, creatively named Eagle. This spacecraft had a two-stage design crucial for transporting Armstrong and Aldrin from lunar orbit to the moon's surface ultimately ensuring their safe return to the command module. The Apollo 11 mission, an awe-inspiring odyssey lasting approximately eight days, was brimming with enthusiasm, wonder, and historic achievements. Departing from Earth, the spacecraft carefully navigated its way to the moon's orbit, reaching a significant milestone by July 19th. This set the stage for the next phase on July 20th, when astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin aboard the lunar module began their descent and gently touched down on the peaceful plains of Mare Tranquillitatis, famously known as the Sea of Tranquility. Armstrong's iconic words, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, resonated worldwide as he took humanity's first steps on the lunar surface. Aldrin joined him, and for approximately two hours, the duo conducted scientific experiments, meticulously gathered valuable samples, proudly planted the American flag, and set up crucial scientific instruments. Meanwhile, Collins, orbiting the moon in the command module, carried out his series of experiments and carefully documented photographic evidence of the lunar landscape. After completing their lunar tasks, Armstrong and Aldrin seamlessly reunited with Collins on July 21st, bidding farewell to the lunar module. They charted their course away from the moon's orbit, initiating their journey back to Earth. Their successful re-entry culminated in a safe splashdown in the Pacific Ocean on July 24th. This historic mission wasn't merely a leisurely voyage, it was filled with scientific pursuits and thorough planning. The experiments carried out on the lunar surface were aimed at unraveling mysteries and collecting vital data. Among the various scientific tools used were seismic instruments to measure moonquakes, a device to gauge the solar wind, and a laser reflector to enable precise measurements of the Earth-Moon distance. These experiments yielded a treasure trove of information, furthering our comprehension of lunar geology, the Moon's composition, and even our Earth's position in the vast cosmos. Moreover, the gathering of lunar samples was not just a souvenir-gathering exercise. Scientists have extensively examined these samples, analyzing their makeup to learn about the Moon's origin and evolution, shedding light on the history of our own planet. The return journey to Earth was meticulously planned, taking into account the intricate dynamics of space travel. The re-entry into Earth's atmosphere presented a critical phase subjecting the spacecraft to intense heat. 
Engineers and scientists had carefully designed the spacecraft to withstand this fiery test, ensuring the safe return of the astronauts. The achievements of Apollo 11 extended far beyond the tangible accomplishments of landing and exploration. The scientific insights gained from mission data significantly broadened our understanding of the Moon. Analysis revealed that the lunar environment held a subtle atmosphere primarily composed of helium, neon, and argon gases. This discovery challenged previous assumptions about the Moon's atmospheric composition, shedding light on its distinctive characteristics. The most prominent feature of the lunar landscape, the regolith, was a remarkable revelation. This delicate layer of dust, accumulated over countless ages due to continuous micrometeorite impacts, covered the moon's surface. The study of the regolith provided invaluable information about the geological processes shaping celestial bodies, offering a glimpse into the moon's eventful history. One of the most captivating findings was the absence of a global magnetic field on the Moon. This lack piqued the curiosity of scientists, prompting further exploration. While certain regions displayed localized magnetic anomalies, the absence of an all-encompassing magnetic shield raised questions about the Moon's geological history and its significant difference from Earth's magnetic properties. In the predominantly dry lunar environment, surprising traces of water ice were uncovered within the moon's forever shadowed craters. This unexpected discovery challenged previous notions about the moon's arid nature and raised possibilities for future lunar exploration, sparking discussions about the potential use of these resources for sustained space missions. Arguably one of the most important discoveries was the estimation of the Moon's age at around 4.5 billion years. This estimation aligned with existing theories about the formation of the solar system, reinforcing the idea that the Moon originated from a colossal collision between Earth and another celestial body. This theory not only explained the Moon's creation, but also provided valuable insights into our planet's early history highlighting the dynamic and tumultuous nature of the early solar system. The insights derived from Apollo 11's mission data were more than just scientific achievements. They fundamentally transformed our understanding of the Moon. It shifted our perspective from viewing it as a mysterious celestial body to recognizing it as a scientifically fascinating world, ripe for further exploration. Now let's fast forward to the Chandrayaan-3 mission's journey to the Moon's South Pole in 2023. The global space exploration community witnessed a significant milestone with India's Chandrayaan-3 mission. This mission was noteworthy not only for India but for the entire international space exploration community because of its ambitious goal, achieving a controlled landing near the mysterious South Pole of the Moon. This region, known for its scientific potential and challenges, held great promise for uncovering new lunar mysteries. The Chandrayaan-3 mission was distinguished by its intricate design and multifaceted objectives, consisting of three key components, each with specific tasks. The orbiter, a vigilant observer from above, carried eight advanced scientific instruments and operated in a circular orbit approximately 100 kilometers above the lunar surface. The Chandrayaan-3 orbiter's main task was to carefully examine the Moon's surface and atmosphere, collecting extensive data. Alongside the orbiter was the lander, named Vikram, in honor of Dr. Vikram Sarabhai, the visionary founder of the Indian Space Research Organization. Beyond being a symbol of tribute, Vikram played a crucial role, equipped with four specialized instruments. Its mission was to gather essential information on various aspects like temperature variations, seismic activities, plasma density, and surface composition, especially at its designated landing area. The detailed planning and instrumentation of Chandrayaan-3 showcased India's increasing expertise in space technology and exploration. The mission's emphasis on the Moon's South Pole was strategic, aiming to explore uncharted regions, solve lunar mysteries, and provide a deeper understanding of this less explored area. The selection of scientific instruments aboard the orbiter and lander highlighted the mission's comprehensive approach to studying the Moon's surface, atmosphere, and geology. 
These instruments were carefully designed to capture a wide range of data, laying the groundwork for significant advancements in lunar research. Pragyan, living up to its Sanskrit name that signifies wisdom, embarked on a journey that unveiled the lunar landscape with remarkable precision. Equipped with two advanced instruments, Pragyan diligently uncovered intricate details about the moon's minerals and the composition of its soil, delving deep into lunar mysteries. Vikram's precise landing adventure on August 23, 2023, following a series of intricate maneuvers carried out by Chandrayaan-3's orbiter around the moon, marked a pivotal moment for the lander. Separating from its parent orbiter, Vikram faced the daunting task of making a controlled touchdown on the lunar surface, akin to walking a tightrope from space to a celestial body. Descending from space toward the moon presented Vikram with an immense challenge. Initially hurtling at a brisk speed of 1.68 kilometers per s, the lander meticulously utilized its onboard thrusters to gradually slow down, reducing its speed to nearly a complete stop. However, the challenge extended beyond just controlling its speed. As Vikram approached the moon, it had to make precise adjustments to its course and orientation, similar to a pilot making last-minute corrections during a landing to ensure a safe touchdown for all aboard. During this critical phase, Vikram displayed remarkable precision, carefully maneuvering itself to position between two lunar craters, Celis N and Manina CA. This particular area was known for its extreme environmental conditions, where temperatures dropped to a bone-chilling minus 240 degrees Celsius. Moreover, sunlight rarely touched the lunar surface in this region due to its distinct topography and orientation to the sun. Navigating through these complexities and challenges, Vikram successfully found its place in this demanding terrain, setting the stage for the subsequent stages of its mission. The accurate execution of this descent underscored the expertise and thorough planning of the mission team, showcasing India's capability to orchestrate sophisticated lunar operations even in the most challenging lunar environments. The selection of the landing site was strategic, aiming to explore a region with unique characteristics that could offer invaluable insights into the moon's composition, geological features, and environmental conditions. After its successful landing, Vikram wasted no time. The lander smoothly unfurled its solar panels, resembling wings extending after a long flight. These panels weren't just for show. They were essential for powering the mission's scientific instruments and ensuring the lander's smooth operation. As the solar panels unfolded, Vikram also extended its antennas, establishing a crucial communication link with the orbiter above. This connection played a vital role serving as the lifeline between the lunar mission and the eagerly waiting researchers and scientists on Earth. Real-time communication allowed for the seamless exchange of data, enabling scientists to monitor and analyze the ongoing events on the Moon. However, despite these initial actions, the lunar surface mission had just begun. It was akin to waiting for the dust to settle after a gust of wind on Earth. During this time, the lunar rover, Pragyan, patiently awaited its turn for action. When given the green light, Pragyan emerged from Vikram's ramp with an air of curiosity and purpose. Think of the rover as an explorer stepping onto an untouched island for the first time. With a lunar day lasting two weeks, Pragyan had a limited time to complete its mission. Designed to travel up to half a kilometer from its parent lander, Pragyan possessed a degree of autonomy. It was equipped with onboard cameras and sensors, like the rover having its vision and instincts. These capabilities were crucial for navigating the rocky and unpredictable lunar surface, ensuring that Pragyan didn't stumble over obstacles or become trapped in challenging terrain. Chandrayaan 3's lunar mission on a tight budget was truly remarkable. India's Chandrayaan 3 venture explored uncharted lunar territory at the moon's south pole achieving not only historic milestones, but also an impressive level of financial efficiency that surprised many. Operating with a modest budget of just $74 million, this mission showcased India's ability to combine cost-effectiveness with advanced space innovation. Looking at the numbers shared by the former chairman of ISRO, K. Sivan, the total expenditure for the mission amounted to approximately 615 crore rupees, which is roughly equivalent to $74 million. Within this budget, the expenses for the lander, 
rover, and propulsion module accounted for about 215 crore rupees, while launch services incurred an expenditure of approximately 365 crore rupees. This careful budgeting is particularly commendable when compared to its predecessor, Chandrayaan-2, which, despite an unsuccessful landing in 2019, had a considerably larger budget of 978 crore rupees, equivalent to $96.5 million. Contrasting Chandrayaan-3's budget with other international lunar missions starkly highlights its cost-effectiveness. For instance, Russia's Luna 25 mission, which aimed for the same lunar south pole but ended in a crash, had a budget nearing 2 million. NASA's ambitious Viper rover project scheduled for 2024 was projected to cost a substantial $433 million. China's Chang'e 4, which successfully landed on the moon's far side in 2019, carried a price tag of around $180 million. The triumph of Chandrayaan-3's cost-effective approach can be attributed to its compact design. With a combined weight of just 1.4 tons, for both the lander and rover, it was notably lighter than many international counterparts. For instance, NASA's Viper rover alone weighed around one ton. This strategic lightweight design led to reduced costs in various aspects, particularly those associated with launch and fuel. However, weight was not the only advantage. Chandrayaan-3's financial efficiency was also a result of its sensible use of existing technology. India utilized its GSLV MK3, its most robust rocket, which had been previously successful in several missions. Moreover, instead of starting from scratch, the lander and rover for Chandrayaan-3 were adapted and improved upon from the designs used in Chandrayaan-2. Despite financial challenges, Chandrayaan-3's mission faced numerous obstacles. Nevertheless, its cost-effective approach, innovative design, and strategic technology utilization enabled it to achieve significant milestones while adhering to a restrained budget, setting an example for efficient space exploration. Chandrayaan-3's remarkable journey unfolded in perpetual darkness. India's third lunar mission embarked on a challenging odyssey, encountering hurdles from liftoff to landing. The mission began with the monumental task of reaching the correct lunar orbit. On August 15, 2023, the powerful GSLV MK3 rocket propelled the spacecraft into space from the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sriharakota. However, the journey to the moon was far from a simple voyage. It demanded meticulous precision. The spacecraft executed intricate maneuvers using its engines and harnessed the gravitational forces of both Earth and the Moon. Ensuring it occupied the precise position around the Moon was of paramount importance as it charted the course for the upcoming landing. The goal was not merely to orbit the Moon, they aimed for the uncharted South Pole, hoping to discover ice and other valuable resources. However, this location posed significant challenges uneven terrain, extreme temperatures, and potential communication issues. For the Chandrayaan-3 team, selecting the landing site was a momentous decision, requiring a delicate balance between sunlight exposure, a safe landing spot, and maintaining communication with Earth. This decision was crucial because it determined the mission's feasibility and the rover's ability to explore the moon effectively. Then, on August 23, 2023, Everyone anxiously awaited the 17 minutes of terror. During this period, the lander, known as Vikram, had to rapidly decelerate from high speeds to safely land on the moon. What added to the tension was that Vikram had to accomplish this without real-time assistance. It had to make split-second decisions on how to maneuver and where to land accurately. Remarkably, Vikram succeeded in this challenging task, enabling the rover, named Pragyan, to begin its lunar exploration. However, Pragyan encountered its own set of challenges. Navigating the moon's dusty and rugged terrain required precision to avoid obstacles and maintain uninterrupted communication. Yet the mission's obstacles didn't end with the successful landing. Operating on a tight schedule of just 14 Earth days, equivalent to one lunar day, both the lander and rover raced against time to carry out their operations on the moon's surface. Within this limited time frame, they conducted experiments, studied lunar soil composition, recorded temperature variations, 
and collected invaluable data, all crucially intended for transmission back to Earth. The challenges they faced were diverse. The lunar temperatures ranged from a bone-chilling minus 180 degrees Celsius to a scorching 100 degrees Celsius, posing operational difficulties. Unpredictable communication blackouts added complexity, and the constant threat of solar radiation loomed large. Efficiently managing power resources in this harsh lunar environment emerged as yet another daunting challenge. Despite these obstacles, the Chandrayaan-3 mission persevered, pushing the boundaries of scientific exploration and advancing our understanding of the Moon's mysteries. In 2019, as India prepared for its Chandrayaan-2 mission, astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson expressed his enthusiasm and optimism for this significant lunar endeavor. He highlighted the mission's pivotal nature, emphasizing that Chandrayaan aimed to position India as the fourth nation to achieve a successful soft landing on the moon, following the footsteps of the USA, Russia, and China. What distinguished Chandrayaan-2 was its ambitious goal to explore the moon's south polar region, a prospect that resonated with many eagerly anticipating the mission's success. However, space exploration is riddled with challenges and uncertainties, Chandrayaan-2 encountered a devastating setback when its lander lost communication during the crucial descent phase, resulting in an unfortunate crash on the moon's surface. The world empathized with India's disappointment, yet Tyson's voice echoed encouragement, emphasizing that setbacks in space endeavors are not the end but rather a catalyst for renewed determination. Now, let's dive into today's subscriber pick. In a momentous revelation by renowned astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson, India finally uncovered what NASA had been keeping hidden on the moon. Neil deGrasse Tyson shed light on India's groundbreaking discovery at the moon's South Pole, revealing a captivating world teeming with untold secrets. This celestial region, as Tyson eloquently described, holds unparalleled importance, akin to a treasure trove for scientists. Its shadowed craters might conceal water ice, a precious resource essential not only for sustaining life, but also as potential rocket fuel, a groundbreaking find. What distinguishes this area is the perpetual shadows veiling ice, contrasted by sunlit peaks offering promising locations for harnessing solar power, essential for future missions. Yet beyond their utility, the ancient rocks found there are like time capsules preserving the intertwined history of Earth and the Moon. These rocks contain concealed narratives waiting to unveil significant chapters of our planetary past. Share your thoughts with us in the comments below. Discoveries amidst lunar challenges. The Chandrayaan-3 mission was notable for its landing on the Moon's near side, specifically at the Shiv Shakti Point, located about 600 kilometers from the South Pole. In contrast to China's Chang'e 4 mission, which softly landed on the moon's far side, Chandrayaan-3 encountered challenges arising from the rugged terrain, perpetual darkness, and extreme temperatures of the South Pole. The moon has a near side visible from Earth, always facing our planet, and a far side perpetually hidden due to tidal locking. Chandrayaan-3's choice of landing site on the near side presented difficulties due to the rough and mountainous South Pole landscape, featuring large craters, deep trenches, and steep slopes. Selecting a suitable landing site for a safe touchdown posed a significant challenge. Furthermore, the perpetual darkness near the South Pole, a result of the moon's axial tilt and deep craters, posed challenges for solar-powered missions. Certain areas near the South Pole had not seen sunlight for over a billion years, making it difficult to generate energy for the spacecraft's operations. Moreover, the frigid temperatures at the South Pole could plummet to as low as minus 230 degrees Celsius during the lunar night, potentially causing damage to electronic components and creating difficulties in maintaining the spacecraft's warmth. Despite these obstacles, Chandrayaan-3 was engineered to endure for 14 Earth days, equivalent to one lunar daylight period. Within this time frame, the mission achieved several noteworthy discoveries. The Vikram lander extensively explored the moon's exosphere and ionosphere. The exosphere, nearly a vacuum, maintained a pressure of approximately 0.3 nanopascals, while the ionosphere, energized by sunlight, formed a sparse layer of electrically charged plasma around the lunar surface. 
Near the South Pole, it was observed that the density of this plasma, crucial for radio communication, fluctuated as the lunar day progressed. This sparsity suggested minimal potential delays for transmission and navigation systems, essential for future human habitation. A temperature probe deployed by Chandrayaan-3 unveiled significant temperature variations just beneath the lunar surface. At the surface, temperatures soared to around 60 degrees Celsius during the day, but experienced a drastic drop to about minus 10 degrees Celsius, just 8 centimeters below the surface. The temperature fluctuations identified by Chandrayaan-3 hinted at the moon's topsoil serving as a robust thermal insulator, suggesting its potential utilization in constructing habitats to shield astronauts from the moon's extreme conditions. The mission also detected a potential moonquake using the instrument for lunar seismic activity. Moonquakes, which can last from seconds to an hour, can be triggered by impact events, tidal forces from Earth and the Sun, or temperature fluctuations. The unprecedented detection of a moonquake implied the existence of internal processes within the moon, with scientists proposing theories such as lunar shrinking or internal heating, leading to the formation of magma pockets. Pragyan Rover's laser-induced breakdown spectrometer revealed the presence of various elements, including aluminum, calcium, chromium, iron, manganese, oxygen, titanium, and silicon. Notably, the detection of sulfur in the Moon's South Pole region was unprecedented and garnered significant attention. Sulfur's presence holds significance for understanding lunar geology and history, and its association with water ice in cold-trapped regions further enhances the exploration of lunar water resources. In the pursuit of uncovering hidden water ice reserves on the Moon, even though the Vikram lander and the Pragyan rover made significant discoveries during their lunar exploration, one crucial finding remained elusive, the direct confirmation of water ice. In 2008, India's Chandrayaan-1 mission initially detected signs of water-bearing molecules in the moon's polar regions using the Moon Mineralogy Mapper instrument. After extensive analysis, scientists used this data to confirm the presence of water ice through three distinct signatures on the lunar surface in 2018. Curiously, Despite these past findings, the Pragyan rover, like its predecessors, did not directly detect water ice during its mission. Instead, it indirectly identified the presence of sulfur, suggesting potential implications. This raises the question, where is the water ice that Chandrayaan-1 detected back in 2008? Two possible explanations emerge. Firstly, it's plausible that the Pragyan rover may have landed in an area devoid of water ice, as these ice deposits are not evenly distributed across the moon. They are concentrated in lunar craters at the southern pole, with sparser distribution at the northern pole. Secondly, another revelation from Chandrayaan-3 provides valuable insight. The chased payload on the Vikram lander recorded a significant drop in temperature just beneath the lunar surface, indicating poor heat conduction in the lunar soil. This suggests that the best place to search for water ice might not be on the surface, but rather beneath the moon's surface. Chandrayaan-3, with a planned mission duration equivalent to one lunar day, attempted contact after the lunar night, but regrettably, no response was received. Nevertheless, the mission was deemed a success, as it accomplished its primary objective of executing a soft moon landing and collecting valuable data during descent. The lunar South Pole is acknowledged as a region rich in resources, and India's Chandrayaan-3 has made a significant contribution to our understanding of this area. India is now collaborating with Japan on Chandrayaan-4, with the goal of directly observing and exploring the elusive water ice on the moon's southern pole using a lander and rover. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Space Zone. See you in the next one.